evening, everybody. Good evening. Welcome to Sunday night service. Let's all stand for prayer, please. Jerome, would you lead us, please? Heavenly Father, once again, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for your protection, Lord. We thank you for your help this day. Yes. We thank you for your love, your grace, your mercy, Lord. We thank you for your love and kindness, your faithfulness unto each and every one of us, Lord. We thank you for the wonderful messages this morning, Lord. And Father, now we ask one more time, Lord, that you, that you would just hover your spirit upon us this night, Lord, touching the hearts and minds of each and every one of us. And Father, we just ask him that your blessed will be accomplished. And for all that you do, we give me praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay. Stephen's going to come and lead us in a couple of songs. Well, good evening, everybody. Let's turn over and open our book to page 409.
turn over to 439. I hear that song, I think of Brother Eddie Haynes. Yeah. Yeah. There was one revival we had. We, we sang that about 20 times in one night. <laughs> Mercy. Yeah. yeah, it's a good song. Okay, anyone have any, any testimonies, pressing testimony, anything? Anything to be happy about? Miss Rhonda? I'm happy to be back. Amen. 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 I love Jesus Christ with all my heart. He saves me, he sanctifies me, and I really, I love everybody here. I'm so glad to be here. I love him. I'm all Amen. I'm glad you're here. <laughs> I just want to get up and praise the Lord tonight because I'm, I'm so grateful to have the Lord. I have my heart. I have him for company all day from the moment when I get up to evening, and I, I'm just so grateful to the Lord for the peace that He gives me and for the joy in my heart that I have. I love it tonight. Amen.
on the right too. It's divorced from spirituality. I'll take it. I'll take a four thousand girl religion over the other stuff. Yeah. I'm just. I'm thankful for him. I'm thankful for his word. Word. Nice. Uh, the Bible study this morning, uh, our Sunday school lesson, in chapter or verse 20, when the elders said that you know they wanted a king, they wanted to be like all the other nations. And my Bible had a reference to go back to Exodus, I think it was 19:5, where God was telling Israel back not too long before that that uh, if they would just if they would just listen to His word and follow His covenant. Then uh, he would, they would be a special people to him forever. Yes. And uh, but just like you know, nothing's changed. We all want something different. We all think we know better, and we want, we want what we want when we want it. And I was just telling. Yeah, anyway, I'm not gonna go there. It's uh, it. I'm thankful for his word because it, it it reminds me of how long it's been going on. It's been like that for forever since the beginning of the time. Nothing's changed, and I'm just thankful for the word because it can change. It can change for individually. prayers. Pray for Reverend Ledger as he brings the message tonight. DJ? First one's book and prayers for my daughter and three grandchildren. Okay. Charlie. Okay. I'm going to pray for still pray for David Moore and and uh, uh, Robert Barber. Yeah, I was trying to think of who else. We, Tom Childer. Miss Foster, Miss Noah, Sister Ethel, Kentucky, Ethel, Kentucky. And the, the Brogdons, Dave and Connie, and remember Doug, Judd, Judd and his his mom and his dad, whole family. And Olive and Bennett. Okay. All right. Let's stand for prayer. Stephen, would you lead us? Lord God of heaven and earth, we love you tonight, Lord God. We thank you for the privilege, Lord, being able to come into your house again tonight, Lord God. Lord, we look with hope and expectancy, Lord God, of what you're going to do for each one of us here tonight, Lord God. Change hearts for you tonight, Lord God. Minister to those that know you, Lord Jesus. Have your way with us tonight, Lord God. Oh, Father, move among your people tonight, Lord God. Lord, we lift up the requests that have been made, Lord Jesus. Lift up Tom Chilson, Lord God, Sister Foster, there in Pennsylvania, Lord God. We lift up the ones that haven't been able to come back yet, Brother Judd, Lord, and Brother Doug Cain, Lord God. Oh, Father, Tommy Brockton and Dave Brockton, Lord God. Oh, Father, so many need you tonight, Lord God. Pray for those, Lord, that are, are still sick. David, uh, David Moore and uh, Robert Barber, Lord God, we ask that you get them healthy and bring them back here, Lord God. Lord, we just ask for your protection here at the mission from the virus, Lord God. Protect us so we can stay open and uh, people can come to church here, Lord God, and come to eat here, Father God. Oh, Father, we love you tonight and we thank you. Let your anointing be on Brother Legend tonight, Lord God. He brings the message from you tonight, Lord. And Father, as always, we ask that your hand your precious name. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay, can I have the ushers, please? <clears throat> Once again, Father, thank you so much for bringing us here today, protecting us from the storm, protecting us from all the things which you have done. Uh, let the offering be blessed. Let those that provide the cash flow to go to the people that need it and to the things that it needs to be used for be a blessing to all of us. We know it comes from you, and we thank you for the grace and for 
just being able to give. And we ask this in Jesus' name to bless the offering. Amen. Stephen's going to lead us in another song. Stephen? Okay, let's turn to page 590.
fun when I get two of my favorites in one setting there. I like both that one and the Haven of Rest. Really good songs. All right, time for Reverend Ledger to come give us what God has for us tonight. Reverend Ledger. Thank you, Brother Stephen. Peace, peace, wonderful peace. Oh, so glad it's a reality in my soul. Amen. Amen. Thank God. Amen. Well, I'd like us to look at 1 Samuel chapter 9 again tonight. I have a different thought, but from the same scripture. 1 Samuel chapter 9. I've been reading about Samuel and been in Sunday school, and there's just a number of wonderful truths here. 1 Samuel chapter 9 again tonight, and we're reading from beginning at verse number 15. 1 Samuel chapter 9, verse number 15. Now the Lord had told Samuel in his ear the day before Saul came, saying, Tomorrow about this time I will send thee a man out of the land of Benjamin. Thou shalt anoint him to be captain over my people Israel, that he may save my people out of the hand of the Philistines, for I have looked upon my people, because their cry has come unto me. And when Samuel saw Saul, the Lord said unto him, Behold, the man whom I spake thee of, this same shall reign over my people. Then Saul drew near unto Samuel in the gate, and said, Tell me, I pray thee, where is the seer's house? And Samuel answered and Saul and said, I am the seer. Go up with me into the high place, and ye shall eat with me today. And tomorrow I will let thee go, and thou, I will tell thee all that is in thy heart. Father, thank you for your word again tonight. And we appreciate your good truth. And ask you to help us to speak. Give us that anointing to preach the word. And give our ears, hearing ears, to hear your word and obey thee. We are grateful for your gracious help in times past, but we need you again tonight. Would you touch our voice and our mind in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. This scripture reminded me of 2 Chronicles 16, 9. Behold, the Lord goeth about on the whole earth, seeking those, seeking those, who have their hearts open to him. This scripture has always fascinated me because it describes a conversation between a man and God. From it we gather some important information about what and who God is. The first thing we notice is that God is a person, not a mindless person force. Been a lot of that nonsense rolling around in the 90s uh, over this silly science fiction nonsense, the force be with you. God is not a force. He is a person. Amen. He has a distinct personality. I hope that in all the preaching I do, in all the years that I've been here, that one thing people know, and that is that heaven is a real place and God is a real person. Samuel and him seem to be very well acquainted by their conversation. If you heard this conversation uh, going on between two humans, you would probably think they were even friends. And you would be correct. They have been friends for a long time. When Samuel was perhaps 10 or 12 years old, he first heard God speak to him. It's recorded in 1 Samuel chapter 3, and the Lord spoke so distinctly to Samuel that he actually thought that Eli the priest, who was sleeping in the other room, was calling him. Three times it happened. He heard a voice, Samuel, 
And he kept running into Eli. Thou didst too call me. Finally, Eli dawned on him. I didn't call you, son. It was God. The next time he speaks, say, Behold, thy servant heareth, Lord. And God began to talk to Samuel. Be careful when you say, I never heard God speak to me. I'd be fearful to say that, lest I call God a liar. I remember when he first spoke to me personally. I was sitting in my apartment in Pompano Beach, Florida, across the state of Florida, reading a New Age philosophy book. I'd bought a lot of them, and I realized it was absolutely garbage and pitched it across the room in disgust into the wastebasket. And then I heard the small, still voice of God. He said, why don't you take an objective look at the New Testament? And I thought, why not? Maybe there's something to say, something to be learned. So I got in my truck and drove to Wall or Kmart and bought me an old King James Bible with the words of Christ in red. Started reading what that great philosopher Jesus had to say. I realized I'd found the truth. He began to speak to me. I ask you, have you heard that voice? God is very faithful to every single person born on the earth. He will give light to all that come alive on this earth if we will just walk in it. Well, Brother Ledger, what about that, uh, that fellow in deepest Africa who never heard the name of Jesus or ever met a missionary? He knows in his heart that it's wrong to kill his neighbor and take his neighbor's wife. Doesn't matter. And you talk to the tribes and find out, oh yes, they have some very serious consequences for acts like that. The light of God has shined into the world. And in these last hours we're on this planet, the light is bright as the noonday. Down through the years, God's voice has been guiding me and leading me along life's journey. I remember shortly after I was born again, I received a call from an old girlfriend on the East Coast, and she said, uh, uh, I'd like you to come over and help me with my vehicle. And I just said, well, I'll have to pray about it. And I went, remember going into the chapel at the mission on Fowler and 2nd Street, kneeling down at the altar, all alone, no one else in there. And I said, Lord, perhaps I can say a word of testimony to her and help her to find Jesus. I heard the Lord speak. It sounded like this down in my soul. Have nothing to do with that woman. I said, yes, sir. I think there's some in this room that have heard that same voice and have ignored it. When we refuse to walk in the light, the light will become dark. Brother Ledger, I remember praying about her for a long, long time. God kept saying no, but I talked him into it. He finally let me have my way. Really? Did you know the Bible says, I change not, thus saith the Lord. Many of you are not in victory right now because the Lord has spoken to you and you refuse to listen. Now remember, do not weary God. His patience is very long-suffering. But there is an end to the time that he will deal with you. King Saul, this man that we're talking about here today, he was a young man who was uh, humble and uh, about his business, and God chose him to be the king of Israel. 
Samuel went and anointed him to be king. That same chapter we're reading. And he began to be king. You know what? King Saul got to like being king. You know why? Because he got to tell everybody else what to do, and nobody could tell him what to do. But you know what King Saul did? He wore out God's patience. He insisted upon having his own way for years until finally the Lord stopped talking to him. Then, when he desperately needed to hear from God, silence. He ended up going to the witch of Endor to get advice. I'll tell you what, he's not the last person who turned away from God and ended up in witchcraft. I think the most awesome thought in the Bible is that a person could be abandoned by God. Not punished, but abandoned. Left to himself. Left to the powers of darkness. Left to everything that is... I saw an illustration recently. I can't remember who said it. But they said, the soul of a man is infinite. And when he starts to go down, he will go down forever. Ever getting worse and worse and worse for all eternity. But he said, those who choose to go up will begin to rise and go up forever and forever and forever into ever more good and blessedness. With an awful warning like that and an awful blessing like that, you'd think everyone would abandon the way of sin and follow after Jesus. Do not trifle with the Lord. God said, because you refuse to listen to me, I will not hear you when you call. Now, Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. If you no longer hear him, you either never have been one of his sheep or you backslid away. Oh, Brother Ledger, I can't backslide. Don't be too sure. Isaiah said, And thine ears shall hear a word behind thee, saying, This is the way, walk ye in it. Ever since the Lord began speaking to me, like Samuel, I have not let his words fall to the ground. Brother Ledger, how have you kept the victory all these years? How have you prevented from backsliding? Listening to God every day? looking to him for his help and strength and encouragement and upholding power every single day of my life. Every Christian may have the privilege of hearing from God. Jesus promised he would never leave us or forsake us. The Holy Spirit will be faithful to be the umpire of our soul. Every time a spiritual transaction takes place in our life, the Holy Spirit will be there to call it. Either praise or chastisement will come according to the truth. Many will say, and I've heard this so much in counseling, oh, I talk to God all the time. If that's true, why are you still living a destructive lifestyle? Remember when King Saul backslid and he was intent upon killing David? Oh, he wanted him dead. The Lord told Samuel to go and anoint David to be the new king. And Samuel said, Lord, if Saul finds out about it, he'll kill me. But God gave him a plan. It worked perfectly. You can read about that conversation in 1 Samuel chapter 16. Lots of people say they believe in God, but never hear His voice. The voice of God is the Word, Jesus Christ. The Spirit of God is Jesus Christ. 
Acknowledge that Jesus Christ is God in a human form, and He will begin to speak to your soul. I want to stand with Brother Wooten. This morning, that message on the deity of Christ was powerful. He didn't do a lot of preaching, but he read the Word, and the Word is true. And we can be confident that the one who created these worlds, Jesus Christ, is also the Savior of men and the one who has promised to walk with us through life's journey. Brother Ledger, what's the secret? Why were God and Samuel on speaking terms? Before two people can be friends, they must be in agreement. Even the psalmist said that, or excuse me, the, the Proverbs, the writer of Proverbs, the, the wisest man Solomon. He said, how can two people walk together except they be in agreement? Amen. We have to be friends with God before we can hear him speak. We must realize that God really is who he says he is. He's the great I am. He's the beginning and the end. He's the all-sufficient one. We must come to the place where we realize who we are. A rebel, prepared to lay down our weapons and surrender to the rightful king of the universe. We must face the reality that we are responsible for the way we are acting. This, this modern gospel that's being preached that people are basically okay and they just need some stuff worked on is a lie. It's a false gospel. The actual matter of the fact is that we are bad because we're inside bad. The reason we do bad things is because the way we really are. Lord, I'm a sinner. I'm not making mistakes. I'm guilty for the crimes I've committed against you and your creation. I deserve the full punishment for what I've done. All the other people I've led into sin and rebellion. All the times I broke your laws. Actually, Lord, I'm a career sinner. Please have mercy on my unworthy soul and forgive me for my sins. God in his great mercy will forgive all your sins. And you will feel and know that he has really forgiven you. The songwriter said, Oh, the joy of sins forgiven. Oh, the bliss the blood washed know. Oh, the peace akin to heaven where the healing waters flow. Samuel experienced it, and you and I may experience it also. It's more than church. It's more than praying. It's more than living right. It's knowing the Savior personally, walking with him through the rest of your life. Jesus will save you from your past sins, clean your heart of that rebel nature, and make you fit for service for him here on earth and in heaven above. Jesus built you for a purpose, to live for him and do his will. You are bought with a price, the precious blood of our Lord Jesus. Therefore, we ought to do everything in our power to serve him and love him. When we surrender to his purpose, when we walk in agreement with him, we have fellowship together and his blood cleanses us from all sin. Yes. Through every trial and danger, Jesus will be with you. Even the last enemy, death, will have no power over you. Christ died and rose from the dead. He shall also raise up our mortal bodies. O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? Jesus is victorious over death and hell. Eternal life begins in our soul right now. Here on earth, the Spirit witnessing with our spirit that we are indeed the sons of God. Samuel's relationship with God was exceptional in his day. Not everybody experienced it. When we read about even King David... He was always inquiring of, with others to find out what God had to say. But now in these last days, after the Holy Spirit was poured out upon Pentecost, the case is not the exception. It is normal for Christians to be in communion with Jesus every single day, to have fellowship with our Creator. 
This blessed reality is for us today. If you will hear his voice, come unto me, all ye that are burdened down and heavy laden. Jesus said, I will give you rest. Amen. Take my yoke upon you. Ye shall find rest for your souls. We sang it tonight. We sang the haven of rest. And we sang the song about peace. Oh, I'll tell you, the peace and joy that Christ gives cannot be compared to anything else. You know, there's some people here, you could blow right past the skeptics and the infidels in our congregation, and Jesus could transform you so remarkably that you will be shocked at what God can do. He's here tonight and willing to start a conversation with you right now. Will you pray? And seek his mercy. Harold Cunningham used to sing a song. I'd like to try to sing it tonight. I couldn't sing this morning. I probably can't sing tonight. But listen to the words. Along the pathway of dark despair, so broken hearted, bowed down with care, I met the master. I knew him there. He filled that longing down in my soul. I searched for him and knew not what I searched for. I longed for him and knew not what I longed for. Then I met Jesus. I knew that I would search no more. He filled that longing down in my soul. Gladly I'll follow where'er he leads taking the message to those in need. Show me thy will, Lord, open the way, make me a blessing, use me today. I search for him and knew not what I search for. I long for him and knew not what I long for. Then I met Jesus, I knew that I would search no more. He filled that longing down in my soul. If you've been bruised by the chains of sin and you are searching for peace within, I know a Savior who will make you whole. He'll fill that longing down in your soul. I searched for him and knew not what I searched for. I longed for him and knew not what I longed for. Then I met Jesus. I knew that I would search no more. He filled that longing down in my soul. Let's stand together, please. Jesus wants to start a conversation with you tonight. <laughs> He's here and waiting. Amen, Lord. I'm tired of ignoring you. I'm done contradicting you. I'm not going to rebel against you anymore. I'm here to hear your voice. You'll hear that prayer. You really will. How about you? Do you need to pray tonight? God is here and he's helped me. I praise him for it. Will you seek the Savior while he may be found? Amen. Anybody want to come and pray? Altar's open. All right, every heart clear. Father, we do thank you for your gracious help tonight. Pray you'd overshadow us all with your presence and blessing. Help us, Lord. Oh, start a conversation with each one of us. May you walk with us and abide in us. And for your gracious help, we'll praise thee in Jesus' name. Amen.